spring practice is almost here it's literally just a few days away for the Miami Hurricanes and with spring practice comes the battle for your position where do you end up on the depth chart and you're trying to fight to make that first impression right now early in spring every position for us is an open competition this season and really it should be like that anyways but especially for us this year because we have a new oc new dc new head coach literally no one is safe no one is guaranteed a starting role on this team you have to fight for it you have to earn it it doesn't matter what you did last season to an extent right so with that being said, is there any chance, even if it's a small one, that Jake Garcia starts over Tyler Van Dyke, that he beats him out this spring? This one's going to get juicy. It's going to get heated. There's going to be some arguments. And let me tell you, I'm going to get into it. Let's talk about it. What's going on, Canes fans? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We're going to get it out of the way. 20K in 2022. Help your boy Coop get to 20,000 subs this year, and I'll do a big live stream. We'll do some giveaways. I'll give away some prizes, some money. I don't know. We'll come up with something. And I appreciate all you guys that are showing me some love and helping me out with this goal. But I'm not focusing on that in this video. I'm not making a big deal about it because right now I'm heated. I'm mad. I'm upset. And I'm ready to talk about this. I had pages on pages on pages of notes. And you know what? I wadded them up and I threw them in the trash because I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to speak what's on my mind here. And I'm not going to put a ton of thought into it. And we're just going to talk about it because I decided to tweet about this a couple of nights ago. I, I, I said, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. I don't remember specifically what I put because I had to delete the tweet. But I had tweeted out and said, Hey, Canes fans, I'm working on a new video and I would like to know if you guys see any skills or any pros that Jake Garcia brings to the table that's maybe different or better than what Tyler Van Dyke brings to the table. And that literally, that was the tweet. That was it. It was in no way throwing shade at TVD. I was in no way implying that Jake Garcia is going to start over Tyler Van Dyke. You, you guys have to understand that college football is a sport. It's a competition. Everyone is competing every single day. And you have to continue to perform and fight for that starting role. And everyone is different. Right When we're talking about quarterbacks specifically, everybody brings something unique to the table. So all I was trying to do was see if there are any skills that you feel like Jake Garcia has that differs from TVD. So I'll just give some example. I'm not saying this is the case, but maybe you feel like Jake Garcia just has a, a higher skill ceiling. Maybe you feel like Garcia is just more overall athletic. Maybe you think that uh, he pushes the ball downfield more often or he he's better at escaping pass rushers if he has to roll outside the pocket. Yada yada, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You see what I'm getting at. Uh, and I was just so surprised at the response from Canes fans and how much they attacked me in that tweet. And maybe I just worded it poorly. Let me know down in the comment section. Maybe I did. Uh, or maybe they just misinterpreted what I was asking and everyone thought that for some reason that I was throwing hate and shade at Tyler Van Dyke and that's not what I was doing I spring practice for me and not even spring let's eliminate spring from the equation every offseason it's every position is fair game it's open competition and it is hype as I am about what Tyler Van Dyke did last season literally he's on several Heisman watch lists right he's won all these awards it still doesn't mean that he's guaranteed that starting role because I, I feel like these are the, the Manny Diaz fans. Like, do you realize how you sound when, when you're saying this guy's guaranteed a job? No matter how he performs in spring or whatever happens, he's guaranteed the job. R say that out loud. How crazy does that sound? Try it. Say it out loud right now, and you're going to realize that it sounds really crazy. Now, let me back up a minute because I'm getting way too heated about this and i'm diving into it without explaining a little more so literally all i want to do in this video is i want to 
discuss down in the comment section. Again, some skills that you see that Jake Garcia brings to the table that might be better than Tyler Van Dyke or just different, doesn't even have to be better, different. And some skills that you feel like Tyler Van Dyke brings to the table that's better or different than Jake Garcia. And let's compare the two. Uh, now, of course, we could also discuss uh, Ja'Curry Brown. I'm, I'm not counting him out, but of course he has the least experience at the college level at this point in time. Now, does that mean that he won't win the starting job? No, uh, but I'm just saying, okay? Uh, so we can talk about Brown as well. Now, before I dive any deeper, I do want to give a huge shout out to my man, Papa Chicken, a.k.a. at umcanes305 on Twitter. I'm going to put up his little response to my tweet right here. I told him I would give him a shout-out because he was the only one that understood my argument and where I was coming from on Twitter. He actually responded back to me when I said, hey, I deleted the tweet. He said, I knew fans would take it wrong. I've been waiting for you to bring this up because it's a fair discussion. Like I said, just because TVD had a great year doesn't mean he's better than Garcia. So, Papa Chicken... I appreciate you, man, for seeing the argument that I was making. So am I arguing that Jake Garcia is better than Tyler Van Dyke? I am not. At the end of the day, how many games did Jake Garcia play in last year? If I'm not mistaken, it was one against CCSU. Now, uh, he did complete 78.6% of his passes, but at the end of the day, he only threw 14 passes, and it was against, against CCSU. So mostly when discussing Jake Garcia, we have to go off of what he did in college and then what we've heard him doing at practices at Miami when he wasn't injured because he's been dealing with a lot of injuries here while at Miami and he dealt with several lower extremity injuries when uh, on the tail end of his high school career as well. So it's a little hard to fully judge exactly what all he brings to the table. But there are a few things we can talk about. And first off, with Jake Garcia, a lot of people do feel like he has a higher skill ceiling. Now, is that because of his star rating coming out of high school? Is it because he was on all of these TV shows? Or is it just because of what he accomplished on the field? I think it's a, a combination of all the above, right? He has star power and he's a big name. We didn't think we were going to get him initially. And then he had to move due to some other various different things. And we ended up landing him. And uh, he loves the Miami Hurricanes. He enjoys being at the University of Miami. And fans love him. And I am absolutely a big fan of Jake Garcia. I like this dude a lot. And uh, I think that he can earn some serious playtime here at Miami at some point. Now, early on last season, uh, Canes fans felt like that maybe his uh, big play potential was higher than Tyler Van Dyke. Possibly he pushes the ball downfield more. But we've realized that Tyler Van Dyke can also do those things. I feel like that early on, Tyler Van Dyke was maybe handcuffed a little bit by Rhett Lashley and maybe wasn't quite utilized up to his full potential. He wasn't always put in the best position to succeed based on the play calling. And it was tough because of the O-line play early on in the year. It improved later on throughout the season, and you saw Tyler Van Dyke's numbers reflect that. I do think maybe that Jake Garcia can throw the ball a little bit more accurately while on the run, but again, this has yet to be proven consistently at the college level. Some cons I could think of for Jake Garcia versus Tyler Van Dyke is, again, probably just injury prone. Possibly. Again, several lower extremity issues that he's dealt with in high school and in college. And it might be easy for him to potentially re aggravate those injuries. Now, we hope and pray that doesn't happen, but I'm just saying that could potentially be a con. And then also the fact that he just has less playing time at the college level. Now, Tyler Van Dyke, on the other hand, has loads of experience at the college level. Once we had the bench to Eric King last year, TVD came in and took over. He shocked the world and surprised many Canes fans and just college football fans around the world. He ended up completing 62.3% of his passes through for 25 touchdowns with only six interceptions. And even though he didn't play every game last year, he still threw for almost 3,000 yards. TVD is the taller of the two. He comes in at six foot four, Garcia at six foot three. 
Um, <clears throat> I realized that, you know, a lot of us guys are going to argue that size doesn't matter, but, you know, one extra inch of of looking over that O-line, you know, could possibly make a difference when it comes to getting a ball batted down or just having overall better vision. So Tyler Van Dyke is slightly taller. And, I mean, I don't know when we're comparing arm strength between the two. You would literally have to line these guys up side by side and just tell them to launch the ball as far as they possibly can. But I know for a fact that we've seen it during games that TVD has an absolute cannon for an arm. A con for TVD would maybe be that he's slightly slower probably and less mobile than Jake Garcia is. But, you know, if our O-line can continue to improve with Mirabal coming in and, you know, Aaron Feld coming in with this new strength and conditioning program, the O-line might not possibly be as much of an issue and having to, you know, purposely roll out more on plays to buy more time or having to scramble out of the pocket and try to avoid tackles might might happen less often this season. So it's not really as big of a deal as it would have been last year. Now, again, one more quick disclaimer. I am not arguing and saying that Garcia is going to start over TVD, and I'm not even arguing that TVD is going to start over Garcia. What I'm arguing is that I still believe every single position group, including quarterbacks, needs to be an open competition this season starting in the spring. You don't just sit back and, again, just award a guy a job based on everything that he did last season. And I'm not a Tyler Van Dyke hater. If you guys will remember, you know what? I should have put this at the beginning of the video. If you guys will remember, I posted a video two games into the season last year in my Walking and Venting with Coop series, and I argued that we needed to bench De'Eric King and put in Tyler Van Dyke. And I argued that for a while and Kane's fans came at me hard they told me I was crazy they told me I was stupid they called me a Derek King hater like they're calling me a Tyler Van Dyke hater right now and that's not what I was doing the point that I made back then was that I felt like Derek King was still battling his previous injury and maybe had a new injury and it was doing more harm than good to the team by him continuing to play. He was a trooper, a warrior, and he put it all on the line for this orange and green. But at the end of the day, it was hurting the team. So I argued that I felt like Tyler Van Dyke needed to go ahead and come in, get his feet wet, earn some playing time and experience, and he would continue to get better and better, and then that would lead into this season. And look at where we're at. I'm not trying to say I told you so. That's what ended up happening uh, but I'm in a similar situation here. I'm just saying be open-minded and let's let these guys battle it out for that starting role. Now, coming into spring, TVD, it, it is his job to lose. I'm going to say that. He, again, has more experience. We've seen what all he is capable of, and I'm sure his ceiling goes much higher than that, especially with this new offense that Josh Gaddis is going to implement. So it is TVD's job to lose. I expect, depending on how they run spring, that if you know they're doing ones and twos or whatever they decide to do, that TVD would be rolling with the first team offense right out of the gate, 100%. But if you'll remember, going back to spring of 2021, it was said that Tyler Van Dyke and Jake Garcia were neck and neck. Those two guys were interchangeable, and the battle was too close to call. So it was an either-or situation. You put in Tyler Van Dyke or Jake Garcia. And the only reason, if I remember correctly, that it was Tyler Van Dyke that got put in is because Jake Garcia wasn't 100% because he was dealing with with an injury. So let's get down to the meat of this. I've ranted on long enough. Do I think that Jake Garcia can beat out Tyler Van Dyke and earn a starting role in the 2022 season? Uh, I do think it's possible. I, I try to not say never on this channel, but as long as Tyler Van Dyke stays healthy and he is in fact a good fit for this offense that Josh Gaddis is implementing, I do find it highly unlikely uh, just because, I, again, the, the experience with Tyler Van Dyke, the arm strength, uh, and I do think that he will, in fact, be a very good fit for this offense. The O-line will be improved. Uh, we've got a great stable of running backs ready to go that will hopefully be healthy. So it would be very, very difficult to dethrone Tyler Van Dyke in the 2022 season. However, 
You never know what can or might happen. And maybe we have some specific packages dialed up that involve Jake Garcia. Or, you know, maybe he just ends up earning uh, some play time potentially. I, we're, I don't expect us to do any type of two quarterback system or anything like that. But uh, you have to be ready as that number two guy. And I do think that Jake Garcia will be that number two guy with Ja'Curry Brown being number three. Now, I have not forgotten about Peyton Matoka, but man, I'm, I'm just being blunt and honest. I don't think that he's up there with Garcia or TBD or Brown, just being honest. And Ja'Curry Brown is a huge pickup. That's a guy that has a very strong arm. Uh, he uses trajectory to his advantage. He loves contact. He's not afraid to run it, but... A lot of times I look at Brown as a little more of a dual threat quarterback that likes to run the ball a lot. And I don't necessarily think that's what we're going to be doing with this Josh Gaddis offense, not with the quarterback specifically anyways. So Tyler Van Dyke will be a good fit. I do think that he will win the starting job. I'm not going to say keep because it's up for grabs for anybody. But I think Tyler Van Dyke will win the starting job going into the, the 2022 season. But let me know down in the comment section below how you feel about it. I started out heated. I've calmed down a little bit because I just, I feel it. I know that Canes fans are going to come at me because they're going to think I'm trashing Tyler Van Dyke. Or some are going to think I'm trashing Jake Garcia. Some are going to think I'm doubting Ja'Curry Brown and what he could do. Or Peyton Matoka. It's none of that. It's all love from Coop. I hope none of these guys transfers. I want them all to stay because they are all ballers. But at the end of the day, it's an open competition, and these guys have to fight week in and week out to earn and keep that starting role. And that's just sports in general, especially football, guys. So you have to understand that we need to have these conversations. Also, let me know down in the comment section below uh, if there are any skill sets or pros that you see that Jake Garcia has that TVD doesn't. The TVD has that Jake Garcia doesn't. The Ja'Curry Brown has that none of them have. Or you know, some scenario like that. Let's at least discuss it and talk about it. I'm so excited for spring. I'm ex I'm ecstatic to talk about each and every practice and what goes on and who who's performing well and what exactly is going down. And we'll keep it covered here right here on the Coach Scoop YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe if you want to stay up to date for spring. We'll try to have some various different guests. We'll do some live streams. And of course, we'll do tons of videos. But just do not forget, as I said last year, I was on the sidelines screaming and yelling for them to put in Tyler Van Dyke. So I am 100% a TVD guy, but I'm also 100% a Jake Garcia guy, and I'm 100% a Ja'Curry Brown and Peyton Matoka guy. I want all these guys to succeed, but I need them to play the guy that puts us in the best position to win no matter what. I don't care what they've done in the past. Does that go into play a little bit when it comes to the, you know, the offseason kicking off and reps and, you know, all these different things in the way you view the player? It does. It does matter what you've done in the past, but that alone does not earn you a starting role. And I firmly believe this coaching staff will properly evaluate these guys because we're in much better hands much better frank ponce coaching up the Q qbs uh, josh gaddis with the offense mario cristobal overseeing all of it we will be in a much better position with this coaching staff and i think that they will sit back properly evaluate these guys and put in the qb that gives us the best position to win games in 2022 so at the end of the day the decision is not mine to make and it's not yours to make all we can do is Pop up on this channel, on forums, social media, discuss it, and talk about it. But it's all out of love for the Miami Hurricanes and all of these players. We want them all to succeed at the end of the day. Remember, though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family. But at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the U. Coach Coop, peace out. And no matter what, bro, no matter what, I'm going to say it again at the end of the video. I will fully back up and support whoever wins that starting job. And I'll support the number two guy. And I'll support the number three guy. And I'll support the number four guy. You know what I'm saying?